You might actually think that the SRAM ETAP system was the first wireless group set out there, but it actually wasn't. And I'm not actually even talking about the old Mektronic and Mavic Zap systems. Um, I believe Mektronic was the actual sort of wireless system. What I'm actually talking about is something that very few people know about because it's only accessible via a diagnostic routine. But if you actually understand how it works, it enables some pretty cool features. Around 2011, 2012, both Shimano and Campagnolo launched their first electronic group sets. And while well, Shimano iterated very quickly to develop their E-Tube system for the 6700 series after the 7900 Dura-Ace five pin, six pin complicated debacle, which had frankly terrible reliability and you know, the rear derailers were, were retrofit from 9000 for warranty support. But the EPS system is pretty long lived. In fact, most of it hasn't even changed for the V4 12 speed system today, at least from an electronic standpoint. But in 2015, they launched something that was kind of revolutionary at the time. They revamped their power unit and their interface system to kind of bring certain things more in line with Shimano, but actually leapfrog Shimano for other aspects. This was the third iteration, and, and the big thing was moving from an external power unit that contains the motor controllers and the batteries to an external internal with V2. Um, and that no one liked the charging solution because you basically had to drill a hole in your frame. No one really liked that. And then it went to the V3 and V3 moved the charging system or at least the port into the interface. But they did something else when they did that, something that none of the OE bikes with DI2 actually has is it brought the wireless into the interface. DI2, if you buy a seven, eight, 15, $20,000 bike today, you still have to buy a hundred dollar, at least Canadian, $110 Canadian or $80 American um, D-Fly unit. Whereas the Campagnolo system, it's built into the interface. And that in 2015 was pretty advanced. The, the interface has uh, basically a BLE and an Ant Plus system working simultaneously. So the BLE is generally used for configuration and plus is a shifting profile, but it's only an information profile. Don't get excited. Shimano has this too. You can't tell the unit to shift through the Ant Plus system. The BLE system, there is not even a standard. Everyone just makes up what they're doing. So both Shimano and Campagnolo both have connectivity, but if you've ever used any of their apps, you'll notice that there's some diagnostics available in them. Whenever you develop anything in the electronic realm, a lot of times you, you want to build in debug stuff, stuff that's not generally consumer facing, but stuff that enables you to either test during manufacture or debug on a sometimes customer level. Um, some this is usually one of the very, very first tactics when a, a return, a warranty comes in and it hits an engineer, they will go through and use some debugging tools on the existing hardware. And they can usually figure out a lot of things pretty quickly. And that's because built in functionality for testing, uh, things that you don't want the consumer messing with. Well, luckily, because of the way BLE is written, you're supposed to enumerate all of your services. And whether or not you use those services from a consumer facing app is kind of irrelevant. Those things are already there. Now there are ways to safeguard and protect them. And lots of companies have done that in the past, the special modes, special keys. We even saw that with the Elite Stairzo. Um, basically it doesn't do anything unless you give it the right keys. Maybe you know where I'm going with this. Campagnolo system actually has built-in diagnostics. If you are a service agent and you have authorization, you can go in and you can do some extra diagnostic stuff. This is usually reserved for pro shops and um, experienced shops that want to diagnose things. And it's not hard to get access to those, but it might be a little bit tough to actually understand what those are. A couple of these diagnostic routines are relatively benign, but 
some of them are actually pretty interesting. Now, this functionality doesn't exist within the Shimano system, and I, I kind of understand why. What I'm going to show you is a little bit dangerous, but in both cases, your group sets are actually protected by, via a PIN code. Um, Shimano is modifiable, and EPS is basically written on it, but you really have to have physical access to the bike in order to see this. So one of the EPS diagnostics abilities is the ability to shift the bike via Bluetooth low energy through the diagnostic mode in their app. The really fun thing about this is by connecting with the app, you don't actually lose shifting functionality. So you can both send shift commands from your lever and shift commands via BLE thus enabling EPS to be the first shipping wireless electronic group set that's primarily wired and one of the most difficult things to route on a bike. So with this knowledge, you can pretty much create a small wireless shifter, such as like a, a climb shifter or something like that, something in that small form factor for your thumbs when you're, when you're on the tops of your bars. It's not really difficult. I haven't done it here because I've struggled a little bit with figuring out how to do peering with BLE with the Nordic dev kit stuff, but that's more of a me limitation and I'm not an expert Bluetooth developer. In fact, the, the stereo platform, most of that initial code was written by Andy and I just popped in a, a few extra little pieces and changed a few things and ported it to a newer SDK. He did a lot of the heavy lift on that. So like this, very possible, very easy to do. You can build a climb or remote shifters that would enable you to remotely shift with your EPS system. The only thing you can't do is you can't connect it to the My Campy app while riding because there's only one BLE connection and you're using it. So with that, let me show you how to enable remote shifting with an EPS system. So as you can see, I have to hold that back here, we're connected to the EPS system. So we're synchronized here. And I'll get it, go back. So there are certain things like unknown service and it lists serial numbers. Okay. Unknown service, serial numbers. Not what we're looking for, serial numbers. So, I mean, these are for the different components inside the EPS. This is that it's a Nordic chip. This one, we have notifications on. Mm, yeah, it has a writable service, but all zeros. Yeah, this one here, and this one here, yeah. So 2720 and 2721, I believe, are the ones we are looking for. So you'll notice that some of them are writable and some of them are readable. And so this indicates I'm in one. So <clears throat> I'm going to write a value of two to that. And my front derailleur moved. So that's the front derailleur. Uh, write a value of Zero, one, front derailleur move back. All right, so nine, 92 DB2720 is the front derailleur, whereas the back derailleur is this guy. So let's read status, he's zero A. Ah, that's 11, uh, or actually, sorry, 10. I'm in the 10th gear here. So let's write nine to it. Zero, 09, it moved and it moved one gear. Now, let's say I write zero, 06. So I want it spinning for this because it's gonna try and shift three gears. So, that was kind of a bit of a, a deke out. Um, 
whatever value is there is the current gear. And if you send a value that's higher or lower, it will shift only one gear at a time. So, but you'll, you'll also notice that I'm not touching anything. Ah, front derailleur. I can still move my rear derailleur and I can still send a, say, uh, zero B for to go smaller. And that still works. So same thing as for the front derailleur. So 21 is the rear, 20 is the front, and you just have to write to this one characteristic, the very first one, which is also tells you what gear you're currently in. Okay, so it didn't show the front derailleur, so here's the synchronization. And let's just send a value of zero two and it moved. We read it back, it says zero two, right to it. So anything below zero? Ah, but it ignores, it ignores invalid. So my fat thumb's in the way, zero two again. And as always, mechanical shifters still work or the electronic the shifters connected to my interface still work perfectly so all you need to do is connect to the this your uh <clears throat> so all you need to do is connect to your interface via ble device and read those services look for them and if they're there sending ups and downs read back the current one send plus one or minus one and you can enable wireless shifting on your potentially five plus year old EPS system. Hopefully you found that interesting. Maybe someday I'll get around to actually trying to build a project, an open source project or, or something off of this in the future. Um, with the way EPS is generally set up, yeah, the only real thing you can probably add are climb buttons. But for a TT setup where you have to buy a special interface, it may, might actually make a little bit of sense to integrate that. Um, you can tuck your EPS receiver somewhere nice and tidy and just use some coin cell operated batteries on your bars and at your brakes. Um, but there's issues with doing any more than a single unit. You have to then build your own communication protocol to talk between them. So. It has some limited functionality, some limited use, and generally it is a diagnostics tool to ensure that your EPS system is functioning and it's not just your shifters are dead or disconnected or, or broken or something. If you found that useful and you wanna kinda of keep following and support the journey as I develop and launch um, different products, and we, we are getting very close. Uh, we're, we're months away from the shipping and announcement of our latest project. Some interesting guesses from the Maelstrom video. So some are close, or at least they cover a part of what this thing does. Some of them are a little bit off base. So stay tuned for that in the future. And uh, thank you.